In this video, I'm going to show you how quickly and easily you can create a Viva Connections adaptive card extension using the SharePoint framework. And this adaptive card extension we're going to build is going to show us some key concept of building these adaptive cards. So what this solution is going to do is we're going to create a card that opens up your home site. Uh, but we're only going to have this card be visible when you're on the mobile device. That way users on, your, on their mobile devices quick, can quickly and easily get to the home site. So let's just jump in and get started. If you want to know more about what we're doing, I'll have links to the source code and to the blog post that corresponds to this video in the description. So we'll do yo at Microsoft slash SharePoint. It's asking us what is the name of our solution. We'll just leave it as a home button. It's asking us what kind of component we're we going to create. We're going to be creating the adaptive card extension. You get the adaptive card extension as part of the SharePoint framework version 1.13 and the current version as of this video is 1.14. And you have three options for the cards you're going to create for the templates that you're going to get. So you can do basic card, image card, and primary text. We're going to choose the primary text template. Uh, the name of our adaptive card extension is going to be, uh, we'll just call it open home site and it's going to go through and create our solution for us and through the magic of video editing you will not have to sit here and wait for all of this to complete okay now that our solution is done creating let's go ahead and run gulp serve so we can take a look at what we got and then we'll open up our workbench within our tenant And let's add our web part so we can see we have a locally running solution, open home site. If you click on that, here's our adaptive card. So by default, it's got a title here for open home site. It's got some primary text in the description and a quick view button. We can click on the preview to actually interact with it. So we click on quick view and it opens up this panel. So that's pretty much all there is to this solution. So let's look at the code and see what this looks like. So open up Visual Studio Code. So within the project, there's just a couple of files we need to worry about. There is this adaptive card extensions.ts file, and this is where we're going to do a majority of our work, our business logic to get the data we want. Um, and then we have our card where we will actually be taking the value, the data from our uh, business logic to display on the card. So you can see that um, our card has these properties of primary text description and title, which we saw on the card. Um, and you can see that the title is actually set by a property. And then this defines what happens when someone clicks on the quick view button. In this instance, they're doing a quick view where it will display this quick view uh, panel, which is also identified if we open up quick view. So this identifies the template for that quick view card that pops up. So what we want to do to start uh, making changes is we want to set the values that are visible on that card and we're going to use that uh, use the state property to do that so using the state property we can pass values to our card and setting the state property forces the card to re-render so we're, we want to pass in through our state the primary text the description the URL and the button text of the card so on the init of the card, we need to initialize the state as well. As you can see, it's saying, hey, you've got some state values that aren't set. So we're going to initialize the state. So we're going to initialize to have the primary text of my card description of this is my card. We're, we're going to give it a URL and a button text for opening Bing. This is just setting some, you know, some default values there so that uh, when someone clicks on the button, it'll do something. So now that we have identified the values that we're going to have in that state and the values that get passed in, we can then go to our card view file and we can make changes to it to actually display those state values. Uh, the first thing I want to do though is get rid of the fact that uh, when you click on the button, it opens up the quick view panel. I want it to open up uh, an external link instead. And I want the target of that external link to be this.state dot URL because we specified the URL is going to be one of those state values. And I want the text of the button 
to be this dot state dot button text. And finally, for the information that's on the card itself, I want the primary text to be this dot state dot primary text. And I want the description to be this dot state dot description. Okay, so does all this make sense? So all we've basically done is we're now using the state to set the values of what appears on the card instead of having it hard coded to what it was before. So now if we rerun gulp serve, we should see the card have these values of my card, this is my card Bing, and when we click on it, it should open up Bing. So let's go ahead and make sure that that does indeed work. So we'll reload our workbench. We can now see that the card says my card, this is my card, and open Bing. We click on preview, we can click on open Bing, and it does indeed open up the Bing website. Okay, so that's how easy it is to, to set the value of the card and have it reflect those changes. So the next thing we want to do in our solution, though, is instead of hard coding the URL to where we're going to open up uh, the card, we want to make a REST call to query what is our home site so that we can make sure we open up the home site for this uh, for our tenant. And that way we don't have to hard code that in our code or set it with a property. We can just query it. So to do that, we're going to use the sphttp functionality. So let's import that so we can use the sphttp client. And then we're just going to make a REST call to the endpoint within our init method to get the home site. So we're going to be making a call to the underscore API SBI home so SPH site details. And then when we get that response, we're going to update the state property. So we're going to, we're going to set the primary text to the title of our home site. We're going to change the button text to say open site. And we're going to change the description to be click to open your home site. And the URL we're going to open is now the URL that comes back from that REST call. So this will now become dynamic and will update uh, after the REST query is complete. So we can save this. Go back into our workbench. Reload our workbench. And you can now see it says the hub. And the hub is indeed the name of our home site. And we have a button here that says open site. If I go into preview, click on open site, it opens up the hub for us. Okay, so now it's working. Um, however, this isn't great because we don't want this dashboard card actually visible here on our dashboard because we're in the home site. We don't need a button to open the home site when we're, in the, when we're actually in the home site. So let's make this button only visible when we're on a mobile device. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go back into our code and we're going to install a package. There is an npm package for React called npm install react device detect. And using this package, it makes it super, super simple to find out if we are actually uh, using a mobile device. So we'll let this package install. And now that it's installed, we can come back to our project and we can import react device detect. And you can see we actually have the ability to know if we're on a mobile device, if we're on a tablet, if we're on a desktop, or even if we're on iOS or Android. So this is a pretty cool package to install. So now all I have to do is say, if is mobile, let's get our home site. And if we're not, Let's just make our card invisible. We can say this dot is visible equals false. And it's just that simple. So we're checking to say, hey, is our mobile device? If we are, let's get our home site URL and let's set the values for our card. If we're not on a mobile device, let's hide the card. And that way we're not taking up valuable real estate in our dashboard. So let's save the solution and let's Play with it again and see what we have. So now when we refresh our workbench, 
we still see our card. And you may be thinking, wait a second, we're on a desktop device. Why are we seeing our card? And that's because we're in edit mode. So in edit mode, our card will be visible regardless, which is great because if it's always hidden on desktop, we would never be able to edit it. Um, but if we go into preview mode, our card is gone. Okay, so in edit mode, we see our card. In preview, we don't because we're on a desktop device. We can open up our dev tools and we can simulate a mobile device. And if we reload and we're on a mobile device, and we click on preview, you can see the card is still there. So this is only displaying now if you're on a mobile device. Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and build this and deploy it. And you can actually see it uh, on our live uh, Viva Connections uh, website and dashboard, or, or see it on our home site and our Viva Connections dashboard. So let's go back over here and we'll do a gulp bundle dash ship. And then we'll do a gulp package dash solution dash ship. All right, now we'll go into our app catalog in our tenant. We will go to apps for SharePoint. We will upload that solution we just created. Which is going to be under Dev, Ace Home Button, SharePoint, Solution. There's our package. And now let's deploy that. And let's go back to our home site. So from within your home site, once you've configured the home site, you'll have the ability to also set up your Viva Connections dashboard. So by clicking on the gear, you can click on set up Viva Connections and view the dashboard. And here is the dashboard and the cards we currently have. I can click on edit and this will allow me to add a card. So let's add a card. And here is our solution that we just deployed. Open home site. Let's deploy that. And let's move that so it's our first card. And then republish. You can see after we republish, that card is not visible on the desktop uh, app, which is what we want. And then if we go to edit it, you can see that it is there and then we can edit it So let's republish it and go back to our home site. So again, no card, we're on the desktop view. We go into a mobile view and there's our card. So you can see on our dashboard, our card is not visible. So it's not taking up that valuable real, real estate. And now when a user opens up the Microsoft Teams app on their mobile device and they click on the dashboard, they will see that card there on their dashboard so they can quickly get to this home site. So yeah, pretty simple to set up, pretty easy to do. Um, the Like I said, the source code is available uh, with a link to this in the description, as well as a link to the blog post for this video, which has some other information. Uh, hope this uh, shows you how to get started with adaptive card extensions. And uh, yeah, enjoy, build some stuff. It's, it's, it's a cool framework. I enjoy how it allows us to really quickly create uh, solutions and being able to focus on that business logic. So as a developer, I greatly appreciate that. I guess I should say as a, as a developer with limited design skills, I really appreciate the adaptive card extensions. Thanks.